before I figured that since I was here in the kitchen, I might as well, since I'm preparing Sunday afternoon dinner, that I tried to answer your question, and I wrote them down. Uh, so, I'm going to try to answer them. I want to thank the person that sent the questions, and uh, let me say this first of all, oh no, this isn't red meat, this is called, I'm a healthy eater, chorizo style veggie protein sausages, boiling a few noodles, gonna bring out some veggies also, so I eat kind of like healthy, healthy food here in the Pastor John kitchen. Alright, let's look at this. First of all, let's answer the questions on Calvinism. I've been reading the blogs, and I've been reading what a lot of people have to say about Calvinism. It's of the devil and all of that kind of stuff. Listen, you have to forgive, uh, forgive me if I move from the camera. I got to go get some more ingredients, right? Okay. All right. I'm stirring the noodles here. We'll try to make this a cooking class at the same time. Now, this is going to be longer than 10 minutes. I'm telling you, it's going to be longer than 10 minutes because I'm cooking and you deserve some decent answers. So I'm going to give them to you. Calvinism. I am a Calvinist. I am a Calvinist. I hope I'm not on my way to a bloody hell. I really do. Onions. But it's not mandatory to be a Calvinist and a Christian. Always wash the onions. That's very important. Especially for some of you young people out there that uh, are spending too much of your time going to... <laughs> going to McDonald's and other fast food places. Um, if you're blessed enough to be in an apartment with the kitchen or something like that, and, and when I was married, Lucy was the cook in the kitchen. I could, She cooked, so I cook. But let's get back to the issue. Ah, I'm trying to pay attention so that I won't slice my fingers off as I cut this onion. There are two major ideas that push this Christianity thing and it's Calvinism and Arminianism and uh, hopefully as I do this unique video I'll have their names up on the screen and give you the years that they were born and they died and how they ministered. Now these are the guys that started the two different views of Christianity but it didn't happen that way originally if you want to find, wait, I got to go stir the noodles again. If you want to find out, oh good, good, it's coming along very well. It's going to be a pretty good dish. Do you know what I'm making? You guys want to know what I'm making? I'm, make, I'm making a great dish. That's what I'm making here tonight. Bro man is laying down right here in the kitchen. Got to get your casserole dish because that's what all this stuff is going to go in. All right, back to the deal. Like I said, it's going to take me more than 10 minutes. And if I like this cut that I'm doing for YouTube, I'll leave it up. If I don't like it, nah, I'll get in the studio and do it that way. But I figured, while I'm thinking, let me answer the question. It's not mandatory to be a Christian if you're a Calvinist. If you're not a Calvinist, that's cool. You can be um, uh, an Armenian in your dispensationalism and still get to heaven. There are some people out there that are going to Typical's website and they are strictly against Calvinism and think that we Calvinists are headed for hell. Um, right now if you look at the screen you see some titles of some books. I have the books in my library. I could hold them up for you. But I'd rather put up the titles of the book that I would ask you to get if you want to study up on Calvinism. I have the complete study formats because I teach um, uh, Calvinism in my classroom when I teach in the classroom. I think it's an interesting study. Um, I believe in the five points of the tulip. You don't have to believe that necessarily because 
being a Calvinist is not essential to get you in or to keep you out of heaven. Now, after you dice the onions, see that? Always dice them up properly and place them in. It would be silly for you to make a nice noodle casserole in the oven. Make sure my oven is set. Yep, at 350. There we go, at around 350, almost 400. Let's stir the noodles again. Oh yes, it's looking good. I always boil my noodles in uh, distilled water. Right. All right, got that cut up? Now I'm gonna cut up the artificial meat because I don't eat real meat. This is far more healthier for me. I know some of you health buffs will probably say, Pastor John, don't eat that stuff. That stuff doesn't taste good. No, it doesn't taste the best in the world, but you know what? It's not me, and my internal system at 65 is feeling far better than it was when I used to eat meats. And if my dear wife had listened to me when I told her years ago, stop eating meats and stop cooking meat, she argued at me in this very kitchen and told me to mind my own business. Well, I am, and I'm not eating it anymore. Uh, so, you could be a Calvinist or Armenian, it doesn't matter. Um, here's the books to get, and you, you will see on this little clip names of books coming up as I talk about that um, once I finish this video. Now, the second thing uh, was where do you start? Well, I believe that the first place that you start is with prayer because if you haven't taken these issues about Bible study and whether you to teach Bible study you have to go with prayer and then you have to also take a good look and, and ask yourself this kind of a question what kind of a disposition always aluminum foil on the bottom of your pyrex that'll stop the goop from sticking to the plate so what you do is you go to that you you go to God in prayer. You can go to God in prayer and tell God that you'd like to be a Bible teacher or you want to, but if He hasn't equipped you with the gift of teaching, don't get me wrong. I didn't say that you have to become a professional teacher. I didn't say that. Excuse me, I gotta get the veggies. Some veggies and just, I have a few potatoes left, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rid of the potatoes and mix them with some veggies. Ah, uh, wait a minute, I see frozen stuff. Okay, why not? I'm just gonna make a blanket of food here. It's gonna be pretty nice. So, where do you start? First of all, find out if you have the gift or the ability to teach. But don't attempt to teach. Oh, when I cook, I usually make enough food for two days. Don't attempt to teach God's Word if you don't know God's Word. And buying books isn't necessarily going to be the key for you to know God's Word. It isn't. A lot of people think, well, I got the same books that PJ has in his library because he told me years ago to get these books. I have these books. Now I can teach. Wrong wrongest thing in the world. You don't become a Bible teacher because you got a bunch of books in your library. It's because you can read something and you can pass on that information. These are spicy roasted potatoes. I like a little spice so I add a couple of see there's tomatoes and and I add it in. Oh good. This is going to be good is it? I have tomatoes and all that kind of stuff in there really tasty. Kind of a tasty thing. But don't think that because you can teach a little bit, like if you can teach um, uh, English or you can teach geometry and stuff like that.